Hello, Chris here again. Let's look at exporting our textures uh, so that we can use them inside of a real-time engine. So first step is to go to File, uh, Export Textures. I'm going to go to Configuration. And on the left-hand side, we have a bunch of presets. We could also create our own configuration. But here are the presets. Um, and then in here are the output maps. So these are the 2D maps, 2D texture maps that you would export. What we want to do is go to this PBR Metal Rough, and we're going to make some changes to this. So instead of changing the default preset, we're going to duplicate it. So I'm going to right click on it and hit duplicate. It shows up at the bottom. I can double click on this and rename this, and I'll rename this to PBR Metal Rough underscore Stingray and hit enter. So here are the output maps that we're going to get. We are going to use the base color. We will use roughness, metallic, normal, uh, and we're not going to use height or emissive. So I can click on this little X next to emissive and this little X next to height. We need an ambient occlusion map. So I'm going to go up here to where it says create and click on gray because an ambient occlusion map is um, in grayscale. And then up here where it says input maps, ambient occlusion, I'm going to click on ambient occlusion and drag it over here onto the gray box. And then when I let go, this little window will pop up. It says from ambient occlusion, gray channel or a channel. I'm going to choose gray channel. I will uh, go through and I'm going to delete this um, texture set name so it's just dollar sign mesh underscore base color and for this I'll just get rid of base too just so it's this color um, and I'll do that for the roughness so it's just dollar sign mesh roughness we don't have a texture set right now we're going to be applying this to a new um, material inside of Maya if we were to export this as such it would have the name of the mesh which is good, but then it would say like Lambert one or whatever material is applied to your uh, model. We don't want that. And for here, I'll say um, dollar sign mesh underscore AO for ambient occlusion. And that's good. So I'm gonna go back to export. And first I wanna choose where I wanna save this. And we're always going to save our textures inside of the source images folder. So I'll select that folder and that source images folder of our project folder, right? Where it says PNG, we're gonna change that to Targa. And this config, right, here's configuration. This is saying which preset do we wanna use. So we want to go to the PBR metal rough underscore stingray, the one that we created. And once we've done that, we can hit export It'll say, export successfully finished. I can hit OK. I'm gonna hit open folder here. And here's what it looks like. So if this was done correctly, you should have the name of your model, underscore AO for uh, ambient occlusion. You should have the color map, the metallic map, the normal map, and the roughness map. Let's go into Maya and set up our Stingray, um, our Stingray material. All right, here I am in Maya. I'm going to select the screwdriver smooth. And with the whole thing selected, I'm going to right click and hold and go down to assign new material. I'm going to go to um, surface and where it says Stingray PBS, I'm going to select that. Next, I'll click on uh, either one of these pieces. So Stingray PBS. And I'm going to rename this to mat underscore screwdriver. Mat stands for material. <clears throat> then I'll select both pieces. And in the attribute editor, there's mat underscore screwdriver. Um, I'm going to ignore a lot of this, but here underneath attributes, it says, you know, here are all the maps that we could use with this material. I'm going to check use color map use normal map, use metallic map, use roughness map, um, and use AO map. So all those should be checked. 
then where it says, if I scroll down further, where it says textures, here's where I can plug those in. So to plug a texture map in, you just need to click on this little checker map uh, box next to color map. It'll open up this file for, or whatever, it might say something different for you, but where it says image name, I'm gonna click on this folder. And then it should show my, should go straight to my source images file. If it doesn't, make sure your project is set, uh, and then look in your source images folder for the, um, for the textures. So I'm gonna choose color. Here's what my color map looks like after I exported it, I'll hit open. If you're, if you do that and nothing changes in here, you know, hit six on your keyboard to make sure that textures are showing. It's the same as clicking on this little icon right here. All right, then I'll go ahead and select the uh, object again and go to normal map, go through the same process. So checkerboard, folder, find the normal, hit open, metallic, checkerboard, folder, metallic, open, uh, roughness, let's get the roughness map, and AO, let's get the ambient occlusion map, hit open. All right, so our textures are now in here. Let's set this up so that um, it looks good to present in class uh, or in Maya. So you're only gonna get, you know, we're not pre-rendering this, we're just using the viewport 2.0 uh, renderer here, um, which will only give you know, which will give, you know, certain results, but it's going to be different depending on what engine you're in. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to turn this grid off by clicking on this little box here. I'm going to create a floor, scale it up like so. Then I'm going to go to create lights, directional light, and I'll move it up into the side just so I can see it. The directional light, it doesn't matter where in the scene it is, it only matters which angle it's at. Um, so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit seven on the keyboard, and then I'll hit E to go to my uh, rotation tool, and then I will rotate the light. I'm gonna come up here to uh, lighting and click on shadows, so I get a shadow. With the light selected, um, I'm going to click on shadows and I'll use depth map shadows and I'll crank this resolution up and let's see turn filter size up as well that's good for now and then up top I'm going to click on the screen space ambient occlusion and then I'll also click on this multi-sample anti-aliasing. Then if I wanted to, I could, um, well, first I'm gonna save my work here. So file, save scene as, uh, screwdriver version six, and save. And then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and do something like select the group, duplicate it, move it to the side, uh, rotate it so that it's a little more natural, just like resting on the floor. If you want to, you could do, you know, you could make a few of them and arrange them. And then set up, set up your view in such a way that um, 
you want to display your model for when it's opened, like in class. I'll create like a bit of a backdrop here. So I'll select these edges, control delete, this edge. I'll move up like this. This edge I'll bevel. this to let's see I'll turn smooth preview on for that floor and I'll rename it uh, stage and this one I'm going to rename screwdriver smooth uh, underscore um, down and I'll just move this up underneath the screwdriver smooth So I just want to make sure everything is named. Directional light one is a default name. So I'm going to rename that to key light. We'll talk about three point lighting in another uh, tutorial. So from here, I want to double check that everything is named. So everything in here should be named and it is image plane one. I don't really need it anymore so I can delete that image plane. And then I will check my layers and make sure that the layers still work. And they do. That's good. I can delete my image plane layer. Uh, I'm going to open up my. <clears throat> I'm going to open up the hypershade by clicking on this little icon right here. The hypershade will show all the materials in your scene, and these are the only materials that should be in your scene. If you have extra materials other than these, then um, you know your scene would be considered to be cluttered and messy. So make sure you only have Lambert one, the Stingray material that you're using, and then these default Particle Cloud one and Shader Glow one. You can just select any others and delete them. Make sure your history is deleted. So edit, delete all by type, history. Um, and then, yeah, like I said before, just set up the view that you would want uh, someone to see it when they opened up Maya. Let's change this to, oops. And double click on this and change this to object. And then move this over here. So a nice little composition. And I can just move this light underneath the floor so it's not visible. And let's just be just to be safe, let's delete our history again. So edit, delete all by type, history. Uh, and then file, save scene as. This will be the final one. We're not going to name it screwdriver underscore final. We'll just name it whatever version it actually is. And I'll hit save as. And we're good. So this marks the completion of the screwdriver tutorial. I may provide a bonus tutorial on rendering the screwdriver out in Marmoset uh, if you have Marmoset. But otherwise, um, yeah, you did it. Good job making it to the end. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.